So then they played it, and like all of a sudden I hear Chance's voice on it. And then I hear Kanye on it. Yes. And I was like, what is happening? You're like, take it, take it. No, it's yours no. to keep. And at first, they, I, was, I like looked at them, and I was like, okay, cool. Like, Because I was like, Are, is Kanye and Chance going to be on my project? Like, Woo! All right, everybody. <laughs> it is my wand here at Dash Radio on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Today we have Grammy Award winning, incredibly talented, one of my favorite singers, Grace Weber. What's up, what's up, what's up? How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm excited and also nervous because I know that your interview is going to be like deep. <laughs> no, no, like no. I feel like we're going deep today. Maybe no, not as no. deep as I think. Listen, but. I keep it strictly. I like to focus on the music and you know why I'm a big fan. So this comes full circle. I met Grace here at Dash. I think it was amidst the pandemic. Yeah, 20, 2021? Or was it yeah, 2020? I think 2020. 2020. 2020. It was before you dropped on one of my favorite projects over the past five, six years, A Beautiful Space. Um, and you were like, you just came here and you were performing for, it was uh, Heredura, the tequila yeah, brand. Yep. And I remember I'm like working the back end of it. So I'm setting the speakers up and then I see you come in. I'm like, oh, she's nice. And then you started <laughs> singing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, shit. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Who is this? And I have been a diehard fan, I would say, Yay. ever since. I love that. Um, you are you remind me of like all the R and B I grew up off. Yes. Just like in encapsulated, yeah. like, like a time capsule. I love that. Um, and you, so we we got to get into everything. I should have started this with I try to get your hometown down all morning. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say the pride of fuck. It was what's a what's your kasa? Was it what? Well, you're in Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. No, but wasn't there, I looked it up, and it said Grace's hometown was what? Oh, Wauwatosa. Wauwatosa. <laughs> you were like, Wauwatosa. Well, yeah, I was like, I, I don't know. Wauwatosa. I can't tell you how many times I Googled Wauwatosa yeah, pronunciation. It's, yeah, it's it's a weird one. It's funny, because like I always read Milwaukee. Like, Wauwatosa is right outside of Milwaukee, so I'm always like, I'm allowed to say Wauwatosa. Or uh, Milwaukee, absolutely. like, same area code or whatever, but then absolutely. when people bring out the Wauwatosa, I'm like... Yeah, I mean, Wauwatosa is actually cool. Like, of all the little suburbs outside of Milwaukee, it's probably the the most chill. Like, once you get to Brookfield and, like, we get a little outside of the city. But, okay, okay. But Wauwatosa I, still holds it down. Okay, I saw that online, and I was like, I'm going to run with it. And yeah. I, I did not get the pronunciation of it down. Wauwatosa. <laughs> he was like, I don't know. Yeah, what? you're like, what the hell is he saying <laughs> right now? Like, Wait, are we like, yeah. But it's, it's Wauwatosa. 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 Okay, shout out yeah. to the 414. The 414. I just talked to another artist. His name is Party at 4, and ah. uh, he is from the 414. Really? Yeah. So. Oh, you know what? It's crazy because a ton of Milwaukee artists are starting to pop up that I've never heard of and that I haven't met, and I feel like, especially in L.A., there's like this little Milwaukee crew that's starting, yeah. and if you're from Milwaukee... Hit me up because I want I want to do like a four one four hang. Okay, in LA. I'm gonna I'm gonna connect you with Party at Four. Okay, I mean, he's a really dope R and B artist. Sounds Fine. a lot like like Bryson Tiller almost. Uh, cool. Super dope, and he can rap too. But today is about Grace. <laughs> Lonely out now. Out now. Uh, it's uh, I feel like you like between. So one of my favorite parts of listening to Lonely is how insincere comes right after it on Spotify. And the, it, I just feel like you have found this beautiful pocket. It's like, it, 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 not that I love, you know how much I love your old work. I can sit here and sing like seven gray songs. <laughs> but these these feel really special. I love that. And honestly, like the goal for this project was to make them all very cohesive and like mm. flow into each other, but still have a unique thing for each one. Like all of them are love songs when different angles on love. And so, you know, Insincere is about a type of like, intimacy or having someone that can take you away from the bullshit can we swear on this yeah absolutely yes. <laughs> yeah you can swear as much as you want <laughs> okay good because i'm about to go in um no and then lonely you know is about being able to like think about the person that you love even when they're not there and like the independence that you have in more ways than one but i'm glad that you feel like they go together because that's something that i get nervous about like i'm like okay do these songs flow well together so when someone just like tells me that without me asking i'm like okay no absolutely check, check it, it almost like it, it's it's rare that you're listening to a song and it flows so well into the next one you don't even realize the song changed yeah you know it's oh like God, it's like that, that. Same, 
And then, it, it, if I'm correct, Lonely, you you pay homage to a lot of R and B songs on there. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Like different, you almost like mention different R and B song titles and. Yeah. We I d- the only one I did that like super intentionally with was Christina Aguilera, which is like not R and B, but the I get or genie in a bottle line is is literally. Oh <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's like rub me the right way, and so I was like kind of giving a. I feel like I don't always reveal what Lonely is really about. Mm. <laughs> I feel like I'm like about to reveal it, but I don't want to. I mean, I mean it has like multiple reasons or meanings, but um, the rub me the right way has like a specific. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, I felt like it was you paying homage to the 90s R&B and like early 2000s. Or let's say more sure. early 2000s. The sound even, like a bajillion percent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. even... Uh, I, I remember, like, immediately I thought about Janet Jackson's I Feel So Long, mm-hmm. you know? So uh, you you are you are like a walking homage to, <laughs> to R&B and everything that's great about it. I mean, that's, like, you know, what I grew up listening to. Like, again, Mariah is not really as, like, R&B. She's obviously a little bit more pop. But she was, like, the singer that I grew up listening to and how I, like, learned to sing, basically. I would hear her runs and I would like slow them down and be like, okay, how how do you do runs? And I would just go to Mariah and be like, okay. But and then Boys to Men was my first concert when I was nine. Really? And so that project was like my number one of all Cooley time. Coolie High Harmony was it? Like uh, the one that like their first project. Was yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. And um, like this Lonely, we actually used Water Runs Dry as a mix reference for the song. Wow. So my mixing engineer and I, Ingmar, we like listened to it together. I was like, I really want to get this 90s R&B sound, not only in like the harmonies and the beat and like the choices of the melodies and stuff, but in the mixing itself. Wow. So that when you hear it, like you get that nostalgic feeling yeah. while still keeping it modern. Like we try, we like really walk that line where we're like, we don't want it to literally be so 90s that it feels like, you know, almost like, corny in a way but yeah like, yeah like still give that little hint of like this is the stuff that i love well that attention to detail is much appreciated from a fan's perspective Yay. so you know i do like two to three interviews here a week and i'm not always a fan of the artists i'm listening to okay. so this is really exciting for me because i am a huge grace weber fan if anyone thinks i'm lying i actually i went out of my way i, I did whatever <laughs> i was able to i had grace sing at my engagement because i'm I such did. a fan like <laughs> Huge fan. I and really it was one of the most amazing engagement oh, thank parties you, I've thank had. You, like thank literally, because well, you because you sang there. <laughs> no, no, there I, were angels walking around. Like, no, oh yeah, my sister <laughs> went out. Shout out to my sister. But no, I really was. I, I, I immediately when I first heard, I think the first song I might have heard you perform was "Through the Fire," okay. um, or I don't know what it was exactly. Maybe it was "Water's Edge," but yeah, uh, I immediately just connected to your music and then uh, played yourself. Mm. As was like my anthem of yes. 2021, 2022. I don't know why. That was there someone in your life that you like needed to? N- no, it just like the concept. I think the way I first heard played yourself, you were talking to yourself, which I don't think is like how you wrote it. Interesting. But that's just the way I visualized it. Yeah. You okay. were like, bitch, you played <laughs> your set. And then like the orchestra, like, oh, uh, I was yeah. like, oh my God, she is like calling herself out. Interesting. The more I heard it, though, I, yeah. Yeah, I actually love hearing, like, the way people interpret the songs, like how, you know, what it means for them. Yeah. It's always interesting to me, and it's always exciting to me, because that's, like, the intention. You know, once I release the song, it's like, this is for you, however you need yeah, it. Yeah, however you want to um, interpret it. But, yeah, Plays Yourself was about someone specific. Well, but. so, yeah, I, ca- <laughs> I caught on to that the more, because I have come out to a hand of your shows yes. and I've seen you perform here. I remember what, what I thought was a real captivating moment. Um, I, I'm sure you remember this. When you were performing here, we had like a little alleyway here at Dash. It's like a basketball court mm-hmm. slash we turn it into a little like New York kind of alley. You had, if I'm correct, uh, it was Leslie Jones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Leslie Jones was, was here crazy. as a fan. Leslie wasn't like, like, it wasn't like, hey, can you please come and just support? Yeah. Leslie was in the crowd, like, bitch, I know. you <laughs> played. I remember I was like, oh, my God. It was crazy. And so I was doing a live on They Have the Range, like a live um, Instagram video, and Leslie Jones popped in the video and was like, I'm a fan. Like, I heard you sing on blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wait, what is happening right now? Wow. 
Um, that's the coolest. Like uh, Dwight Howard, you know, basketball player. He was on the Lakers. <laughs> yeah, I know Dwight Howard. He uh, became. Oh. He was a fan. He like followed me one day. Really? I was like, Why is Dwight Ho- Howard following me? Dwight. Yeah, and he was like, I'm a fan of your music. And then he came to my show in L.A., like, again, as a fan. And I was like, this is crazy. So, yeah, it's been uh, wow. fun. To Dwight have came to one of your shows. He did. Could you? I know normally <laughs> when you're performing, you can't really see what's happening out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you, like, spot Dwight Howard? Oh, yeah. Or you're like, oh, For my sure. fucking God, that is I'm, Dwight like, Howard. up to his hip. Yeah. <laughs> like, we do you have a picture? picture? You do? Yeah, yeah. And oh, I'm literally to like, that. yeah, I'll show you after. Wow, really wow. Funny. Shout out to Dwight. I know. So, yeah, it's been... It's those moments are just like really. Do you remember Milky Chance, the band from like Milky the nineties? Milky Chance, no. They had that song. Um, I was just listening to it today. We'll pull it up. Like if you hear it, it's one of those like things that you're like, oh yeah, this was like a huge song, like nineteen ninety eight. Anyways, they followed me today too, and they're like, it's just like these wow. like. Right, it's actually a lot of people like who liked nineties music and to that are like starting to follow me. No, that's obviously. That, that's but. why for me like. I think it was, to me, the craziest thing I heard in the past two, three years was when Puff Daddy, who I love Puffy, and I've called him out on this in interviews. I don't know if you've seen it ever. But he said R&B is dead. I know. It was so random. I was like, are, how, like what are you smoking? Yeah. Who's your weed man? I think he was thinking, like, and I've, I've, like, watched a lot of interviews about this, too, but sort of the, like, on your knees, like, rain coming down. Oh, like, yeah. That, I mean, like, the boys to men R&B, I guess. But at the same time, like, I feel like if you really – listen to even Absolutely. like Lucky Day or like like they still have like all that How can like, R&B be dead if Grace is alive if India Sean is alive yeah. if Vito's alive Eric Bellinger mm-hmm. there is some great I think what Puffy he missed the mark I think what he was trying to say is <laughs> the general uh, masses doesn't support or get behind yeah. like the real like the the old school R&B you know what I mean they and like it's not on the radio like I feel yeah. like when you know we were coming up yeah <laughs> back in the day <laughs> like you know I don't know, like Water Runs Dry was like on the radio. Ab- and so, absolutely. which I loved. Like, and I feel like there's still space for that to happen. Like, I think there's actually like a new um, radio station in Milwaukee called Hyphen okay. that is all like focused on specifically like black music and um, R&B and soul and rap. And they play like Lucky Day and Cleo Soul and like all these uh, artists who I'm like, I want to hear this on the radio. Like, called when I'm Hyphen? Just, hyphen. Shout out to you, Hyphen. H-Y-F-I-N. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so I feel like more stations, like, maybe Hyphen can be, I mean, it, there's a ton of stations, obviously, that play R&B, but I feel like if they can become more like the Kiss FMs and the, you know, the, the huge stations that can play these. Uh, absolutely, these and I, I think it's going to take one really big R&B record, yeah. um, which I have a feeling is going to be a Grace <laughs> Weber record, but just one really big record that's going to redraw everyone's attention to that yeah um, but I want to get into your beginnings if, if you don't mind uh, you, you grew up in a music family right yeah like your yeah. mom was a music teacher um well my grandpa was a musician so he okay. uh, played um, organ and accordion actually in oh piano, wow which was really fun but he played um, in like an army band oh and whoa. so him and my grandma had 10 kids which like I don't even understand how that's possible but so he had all of his kids learn an instrument growing up. So all my aunts and uncles played instruments. So when I was coming up, like I had, you know, like a hundred cousins because all my aunts and uncles <laughs> got married and had kids. And so when we were, um, you know, at Christmases and Thanksgivings, it was just like part of the family um, event to sing around the piano with my grandpa wow. and my uncle. And so like literally music was family to me. Like I didn't yeah. think that, you know, that you could not separate the two in my head. Yeah, so it's yeah. always been like a very near and dear part of just like who I am. And you that. and you were in a choir, right? Like you sang in the church mm-hmm. choir. Oh, I yeah. feel like that's yeah. where you got the soul because oh, there's yeah. like a soul deep inside of mm-hmm. you that you can hear it when you sing. Yeah, I mean it's funny because like I always, I, like my mom will always always say like you always sounded like like that like you always had this like soulful R and B sound even when you were like six. <laughs> like wow. it's just like. <laughs> Uh, and I, and like like big singers too. Like when I was seven, I sang um, "Because You Love Me" by Celine Dion at the talent show. That was like my first. Was so it wasn't just one. so it was like Whitney and Celine and like those yeah. artists too. But but I was in um, like the Milwaukee Children's Choir when I was like ten, and that was one of those choirs that was more like classical. We wore like bow ties and cummerbunds, <laughs> <laughs> and like it was it was cool, but it was like not where I felt 
like myself. And I always had this dream. I was like, I want to join a gospel choir. But in Wauwatosa, like, there weren't really a lot of gospel choirs. And, like, I didn't even know, you know, when I was, like, 11, 12, that, like, there was a gospel choir in the city. Um, And so I was at a retreat when I was 12 with my grade school. And uh, they were like, hey, we have, like, an exciting thing for you guys. Like, the Central City Youth Gospel Choir of Milwaukee is going to come in and sing for you. And in walked this, like, epic gospel choir. And they sang for us. And I was like, this is my moment. Like, you only get one moment in life to, like, you know, take the chance to, like, you know, follow your dreams or whatever. So um, at the end of their performance, I raised my hand, and I was like, can I sing for you guys an audition, like, right now? (laughs) They're like, sure. And so I think I sang Amazing Grace, maybe. And they let me in the choir, and then... Wow. That's where I really began to feel like... How old were you? I was 12. 12 12-year-old you was like, give me a chance. Yes, literally. Give me the ball. Yes, yes. And... Yeah, and then from there, like, just the experience of singing in a space where you get, like, the reaction in the moment. Like, Mm. you can be, you know, singing something that's, like, so, you know, um, emotional and, like, heartfelt, and people in the room are like, yes, sing, like, and singing with you. It just, like, it made me um, realize what I love about live music and, like, why in my live shows I really try to get the audience involved with me or, like, you know, singing with me because it goes back to just like what I loved about singing in church. Yeah. Wow. Well, you, yeah. you, you had another one of these big moments. Uh, I think you were, I mean, sometimes Google and my research ends up being wrong, but <laughs> you did a Showtime at the Apollo, mm-hmm. right? At yeah. Like, you were like 16. Yeah. Yeah. That must have been another one of those <laughs> like, oh my fucking God, I am at the Apollo. Yeah. It was crazy because I used to like sneak down, um, you know, to our, like, family room, because the show was at midnight, you know, Mm -hmm. and when I was, like, 12, 13, 14, I was obsessed with it, and so, like, everyone was sleeping in my household, and I would, like, sneak down the stairs and, like, turn on Showtime at the Apollo. Yeah, volume all low, so you don't wake anybody. (laughs) Seriously, and um, they, one of the Showtime at the Apollos, they had this thing, like, a commercial that was, like, you can be on Showtime at the Apollo, just sign up here, whatever, so I signed up without telling my parents, And then I, like, got the email or I don't remember, like, a letter in the mail or something that was, like, you, like, get a chance to audition or whatever. So the first part of it was, like, being on the Milwaukee show at Timothy Apollo. They did, like, vocal shows. Oh, okay. And then from there I got to be on the the show in New York. Wow, Um, wow. And it was amazing. I think if I was older than 16, I might have been too scared to do it. Mm. But because I was, like, young enough to not know the, like, tragedy of if I had gotten booed up. <laughs> yeah. Like, I didn't well, get booed up. How did it go? Did you amazing. Get it was amazing. No, it was like uh, incredible. How incredible. At first when I walked out, people were kind of giving me the side eye like, I don't know if you're gonna be good or whatever. And then I sang and it was it was great. But if I had gotten booed off of Showtime at the Apollo, like I don't know It might have changed your whole trajectory. Literally like I don't know if I could have handled that. Yeah, yeah. It might have really changed everything. I you don't w- think I yeah. I might not be sitting here with Grace. No, like, I'd be like working. I, w- I don't know. Some. Yeah. I would have given up. Yeah, and I wouldn't. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have uh, two incredible projects to listen to all the time. And these, this, this back to back, lonely and insincere is one of my favorite eight minutes of my life. Like seven, oh, eight minutes, wow. however long it That's is when those two statement. hit. No, uh, it just feels really good. You know, <laughs> Thank I you. I still listen to Stevie Wonder songs in the key of life. Mm. Like it just came out last mm-hmm. week. Yeah. I'm not lying to you when, like, Lonely is... I have a playlist. It's, like, my jams playlist where it's just, like, all feel good. Mostly oldies. Like, mm-hmm. very seldom does a, a newer song crack onto there. And there's, like, Grace is on that playlist, like, four or five times. really happy. Through the Fire's on there. Played Yourself's on there. Insincere and Lonely both made it. It just feels good. That makes me um, so happy. <laughs> no, it makes me happy when you drop music, honestly. I'm like, yes, go, girl, like... Get it clean. <laughs> Get yes. It clean. Keep feeding me because I'm a huge fan. Yay. Um, I got to give you uh, an album. I actually got two albums okay. for you. I give every artist a CD oh. from my CD collection. I love that. Um, yeah. One of these CDs I, I had to actually go out and get because I didn't own this artist. Okay. Um, the other one I did, and I'm like, perfect. So Ooh. these are CDs I think you might have grew up off and then i want to uh talk about oh my uh, god real cds Let's these are go. real actual albums oh shout god. out to uh, amoeba i'm waiting We're, for the damn sponsorship yeah for real we're going way back to yes 2000. yes <gasps> okay oh my god cool Cart, court and spark joni, joni mitchell and india ari voice yeah like 
a bajillion percent. Both yeah, of these. I, I felt like that really uh, encapsulates. India, uh, yeah, and honestly, like India Ari was a huge influence on me, and I feel like I always forget to bring her up. Like, um, video was one of those songs that, like, was on a loop for me. You know, in, just her sound. In like, general, the reason I went with these two because I, I, I initially <laughs> my instincts were like was like get her brandy because to me mm, you were like yeah. I hope I don't get canceled for saying this but you were like brandy's like white child you know what I mean <laughs> like you were like the white version of brandy just, you know but you India Sean and some other singers I know I feel like brandy birthed the whole generation of oh, beautiful yeah. singers yeah but. The reason I went with India Ari is I feel like Grace Weber is still very, uh, like, you, you still haven't had that moment yet. Like, you know what I mean? You're mm. still underappreciated for what I see you as. Yeah. So I was like, India Ari also, like, when we talk about the, like, top five, ten best R&B singers, people always forget to mention her. But yeah. But, like, India Ari is fucking incredible. Incredible. And, yeah. You know, it's interesting, like, when I was in London um, a couple months ago, uh, the artists that I was working with were really specific about the difference between R&B and soul. And for mm. some reason, I feel like when I, like they wouldn't have said that India Ari is R&B necessarily. I don't think. No, maybe. you're right. It is soul. Yeah. And like, I was kind of like, oh, interesting. Because often like I'll pair that together. And yeah. I don't know if that's because of like the way like R&B and soul was always said that way. Like for a lot of the music that I loved, like on when I was listening to it on the radio, like I feel like it was like, Anyways, but so I feel like, interestingly, like, I wonder if India is, like, more in the soul category, but I don't know. It just has been, like, an enlightening thing to me to be, like, huh, I didn't know people, like, separated those genres as No, much I as, think you're yeah. right, because there's, like, there's, like, uh, D'Angelo is much more of, like, a soul singer to me, too, and, you yeah. know, there's, there is that whole genre, and, but I had to give you a Joni Mitchell album, too. Because you. you are an incredible songwriter. Yay, thank you. Your songwriting, like your pen game. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> thank Holy you. shit. Like sometimes I listen to a Grace song and I'm like, the fuck did she just say? Oh my <laughs> God. Thank you. H how long have you been writing music? Uh, since I was a senior in high school. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to remember his name. I always tell this story, but for some reason in this moment, I can't remember his name. But I met this, um, you know, wherever you go, whatever you do. I will be right here waiting for you. Do you know that song? Mm. Whatever you say. Okay, so it was like this huge song. What is his name? Anyways, huge song in like the 2000s. And um, one of those guys who had like the number one song of like 2002 for like, okay. um, it, he was like a like a pop adult contemporary singer or whatever. Anyways, um, I met him randomly through someone that I knew. Um, and he, I was like, what's your biggest advice? Like as a, as an artist. He was like, a lot of people can sing, especially in like this American Idol era, like, you know, you have a great voice, but like in order to define yourself as an artist, you should start writing songs. And wow. I was like, okay, like, oh, Richard Marks. That was his Okay, name. Richard, Richard Marks. Marks. What great <laughs> advice, Richard. Yeah, and wow. I was like, okay, like, I'm going to start. So I picked up a guitar and like started learning guitar. And I think the first song that I wrote um, was actually a song for my friend whose dad had just passed away. Mm. Um, and so like... I wrote a song, you know, for her just about, like, just bad experience and, like, that she's going to be okay and whatever. And I think, like, because that was my first experience of writing a song, like, it opened the door for me to, like, knowing that the songwriting that I wanted to do, like, I really wanted it to, like, be there for people, I guess. Mm. Like, which is why I like that people, like, take songs and make it their own, you know? And, like, because I want you to be able to use a song for whatever you need it for. Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, I was watching, you remember John Batiste's um, uh, Grammy speech a couple no, years ago? No, no. When he won Best New Artist, um, he said, like, music goes out into the world. And because his whole thing was, like, there's no best artist, there's no best music, that's what he thought. And he yeah. was, like, I think that music, like, goes into the world and it finds who it needs to find at the time that they need to find it. And like whether that's a million people or 10 people, like that is the the journey of music. And I yeah. just thought that was kind of cool. But it yeah. is, no, it's true. Yeah. Like you, like we were saying earlier, Grace said one of the craziest things I heard in my life. Uh, <laughs> her, her incredible song, Through the Fire, was playing. And you're like, I'm not like the biggest fan of this one. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> do you know how many times I have had, like, okay, I got a long day ahead of me, 
and through the fire, honestly, just like it, it gives me a boost. Oh, like that uh, makes me so my happy. Like, my like <laughs> cells readjust, and they're like, "You're gonna get it." Dang, uh, that's It's just cool. something about the uh, like d- in the chorus. I don't know what it is, but the way it's like it builds up, like ooh, like the I I, I can't sing. But, <laughs> yes, you. Um, so the way that you uh, executed that that song, absolutely for me, it translates to like. Like, if I was at the gym, that's, like, a song. Like, I rarely go to the gym, as you can tell. But that's, like, a song I would listen to at the gym. Mm. And I'm sure when you made it, it meant something else. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, your music is very well written. Thank you. If I'm correct, you write most of everything Grace sings, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I, I have, like, co-writing sessions with incredible writers. And sometimes, like, when I'm in a co-writing session, it pushes me big time to, to become a better writer because... And honestly, like to trust myself more. That's the mm. interesting thing that I notice. Like when I'm in a co-writing session, something that I think maybe isn't the best lyric that I, if I was alone, I might be like, eh, I don't know if that's good. Like in a co-writing session, people would be like, no, that's dope. And then I record it. I'm like, actually, that is cool. Like, and so I, in when I'm writing by myself, I'm like, trust yourself more. That like mm. these these are good choices that you're making. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think for me, like. The songwriting process always starts with the music first. Like I hear the beat or I hear like the chord progression or whatever. And like the lyrics start coming to me based on like what I'm feeling from the music. Okay. First. Yeah. It, is it is there any of your songs that began the other way where it was like a melody that came to you or a concept and then you went to the producers and was like, this is what I hear in my head? Um, sort of. I think with this project, I actually tried to do that. I was like, I want to write songs about love and about my husband. Mm -hmm. Like, because I feel like up to this point, I've written a lot of songs that are about like my journey or like self-discovery or like things that were happening in my career kind of that like were actually morphed into love songs. Like, Plays Yourself is more about like someone in my career world. But like, I know people don't want to hear like, you know, the paper you <laughs> sign. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Like, you I, made me sign. Sad as shit. Um, maybe they do. Well, maybe inc- they do need that. Wait, hey, I should incredible. trust myself more. Hold on. But Played yourself was about a, a, a bad industry contract? Yeah. Or or, well, not a contract, but yeah. yeah. And wow. So I like translate some of those moments into more like of a love, not really like, even played yourself like if you really listen to the lyrics it's not necessarily like talking about love or like a relationship but or like a romantic relationship like but i i do try to like make it more universal so it's like more about a relationship to you know versus like specifically something yeah well it life, feels like a love song almost yeah it, yeah it, it really did the first time i i had heard played yourself I thought you were telling yourself you played yourself because right. like you fell in love with the wrong guy. Mm, and then the more I saw you perform it, I'm like, oh no 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 no, she's talking about the other person. Like they're the bitch who played themselves. Yeah, yeah. And then now, <laughs> full circle, it's like this. Yeah, yeah. That's, it goes back to like music. It's however it reaches the listener. Right. And actually, for that song too, I think I was like, because I was really going through it in the moment. And so when I was, I was in a co-writing session for that one, and. They were like, what do you want to write about? And I was like, I need to get this off my chest. Like, I'm going through this shit. Like, it's dragging me down, and I need to get it out. So there are probably, if I really think about it, there's probably more moments that I'm realizing where I'm like, this is the topic. But a lot of them come to me just, like, by hearing. The, um, and it's sort of like, like, for insincere, it's sort of like, I'm so sick of saving. No, it kind of feels like. And then I'm like, oh, what is that? Like, just when I was feeling safe. And then like these words start to come out and I'm like, oh, maybe this could be about, like, I feel like I'm being pulled to like what the song is about or Mm, something. It's like breadcrumbs, I say Yeah, yeah, like Like, you had the medley in your head and then you you started to piece together what it was. Yeah. Well, I fucking love that record. Thank you. Honestly, and you, oh my God, there's like, if if you saw, I think if you, I think it's actually, on my Spotify, you know, they do the yearly breakdown. Mm-hmm. I want to say Parachute was one of my top five songs, and I think you cracked my top ten artists. So this is like no <laughs> cap. That shit's on my no Instagram. Cap. Like, I'll, I'll, if anyone wants to call me out on that, I'll post it. I'm a huge fan of your work, and I'm really excited for what's to come. So Insincere <laughs> and Lonely mm-hmm. are out. It's mm-hmm. almost like a perfect little, like, just, you know, A and B side, I mm-hmm. guess. You know, like back in the day with the tapes. Um, but what are we building up towards? 
Um, I have another single coming out in May. Ooh. Another one in June. Okay. Another one in August. Okay, and, and then, then we're going to Cancun, <laughs> yeah. and then we're going to Miami. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. I would actually no, but that. so you, it's yeah. gonna be rolling. We're rolling, and Are then album up? in the fall. Oh, yeah. album in the mm-hmm. fall. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm, and we have some crazy features. Like I'll keep it a secret. Okay, for you. but there's Just, some like features. Yeah, features, features. features. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You've yeah. always yeah. had some crazy features. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about I have, your your uh, friendship <laughs> or relationship with. Um, I'm gonna, I always get their name wrong. It's that produce that production team, White Sox or, or Social Experiment. Social Sox, Experiment. Sox Boys. Yeah. Sox Boys. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to Nate Fox. What is it? Nate Fox. Nico uh, Siegel. Peter Nico Cottontail. Siegel. P- Peter Cottontail. And then um, wasn't there another dude who played the trumpet, or he just was in the studio? Ah, uh, that's me Donnie Trumpet, but he goes by Nico Nico oh, Siegel. Nico right Siegel. Now. Okay. He actually my bad. changed his name when like Trump won. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah. He was like, I can't be Donnie oh, Trumpet yeah. anymore. At least wow. I think that's how I remember it. Yeah, okay. Not well, right, but <laughs> you had, uh, when I first heard A Beautiful Space, what really drew me towards it was that motherfucking Nate Fox and that mm-hmm. production. It just, yeah. not, it's not just him, but it felt like a Chance the Rapper album. Just yeah. was so well put together. Um, then, you know, Chance was on Through the Fire. Mm-hmm. So how did this come about? How did Grace Weber get into the room with them and build this relationship with them? Yeah, it's actually a crazy story. And my friend Amy, who's here. Shout right out now, to Amy. Lo- Lotus Candles, yes, 555 yes, is our magic out. number they feel for so the interview. Good. So good. Mm. So They're good. actually this setting the mood. <laughs> I love it. God. Oh, it yeah, is glittering. Yeah. It is good. These candles, hold on, we're gonna take a quick commercial break. <laughs> These lotus candles are incredible. I have acquired two already. They burn really well. They smell great and there's they glitter. I yeah. swear to fucking God. And so mm-hmm. you can't see right now through these cameras. I'd have to spill all the wax over. <laughs> this shit glitters. Yeah. It actually oh, glitters right. while the wax is burning. Yep. 40 motherfucking hours. <laughs> so Amy, I actually met Amy back back in the day when I got a chance to work with Nate Fox. So yeah. she's the one who looped you in with that. Well, she was in the room. And it's so, isn't it funny that like Amy was in the room for both? You're like the magical yeah. piece exactly. of the puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so in 2015, when um, Surf came out, mm-hmm. um, I was already a fan of Acid Rap. I was like, what is this? Like yeah. the, the beginning of like Acid Rap with a good ass intro. I was like, whoa, they're taking gospel music and making it like, Hip hop and and like something that I've never heard just before, cool. and like magical and cool. Yeah, and like, yeah. There was like it kind kind of reminded me of like Frank Ocean's production style in the sense where you feel like, whoa, this is like that next level thing where you can't even understand how he's doing it. I mm-hmm. don't know that like it's just like magical. I don't know. But um, so and then when Surf came out, I was like, whoa, this is so cool and like so artistic and just yeah. different like it was so refreshing to me absolutely that's the best word to put it chance yeah. the rapper when he came out it was refreshing so refreshing yeah. and like because i grew up singing gospel music i was like oh my god this is what i've been wanting to do like up to that point i had trying been trying to find my sound like you know am i like should i do sort of like the adele path and kind of do like a 60s soul thing but that like never felt right or like mm. Like, I was trying to find what, pa- like, thing I fit in. But when I heard the social experiment, I was like, oh, I can have my own thing. Like, yeah. I don't need to, like, like, I knew that those guys could help me define my sound Absolutely. versus, like, trying to chase the sound. So Absolutely. I had, like, asked people, like, do you guys, do you know the social experiment? Like, friends and stuff. I was in New York at the time. And so I didn't really know anyone in the Chicago scene or L.A. at that time. Um, but anyway, so I didn't really meet anyone who knew them. But then I like tell the story so many times, so you've probably heard it. But I was in LA for like some something else, and a friend of mine um, texted me. Was like, "Hey, there's like this session with these dope producers. It's tonight though, in like two hours. Do you want to go?" And I was like really tired, and I kind of had a really weird day with another producer whose studio was like all white, and the chair that he sat in was like a Ferrari chair, and it just was like depressing. And he mm. wanted me to be doing something like totally different than what I wanted, and. Mm. So when he was like, do you want to go to another session? I was like, oh, I don't know. But then there was like this little spark in my gut that was like, you should go. So I show up at the session. It was like a space that I'd never been in either because like a lot of the sessions that I had been in up to that point were kind of like, I don't want to say sterile, but like very, like more traditional like singer-songwriter sessions or like more pop-leaning or um, 
there was never like a shit ton of weed in the room. Mm-hmm. This was <laughs> the I, first, yes. I walked into this room and it was like, <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Everyone was like, and I hadn't really been like around as many like younger producers and stuff. Like uh-huh. I feel like I had been working with um, like I I worked with like Joss Stone's producer. Oh shit, yeah. Before that, and like who were kind of people who had already like made their stamp, and now were like a little older. Anyway, so I walked into this room and I was like, this is so fucking cool. Like <laughs> what the hell? Everyone was so chill and like and um. I uh, meet these guys like Nate and Nico and I didn't realize it was like Nate Fox and Nico Siegel because I think it, up to that point like I hadn't really done a ton of research into like the individual guys I just was like oh the social experiment like what is that anyways so um Amy was actually the only other girl in the room <laughs> I remember kind of like Amy. cozying up to her and be like and she was roommates with Nate at the time and also she's a credible stylist and creative director she's my both of those things um but I like cozied up to her and was like, what's going on? <laughs> like, what's your name? Um, and then Nate Nico pulled up this track and was like, would you want to sing on this? And it was like everything. This is a song that has not come out yet, but oh. I want it to. It it's still to. on the hard drives. It's on the hard drives. I'm, I'm saying it right now. It has to. And Manifestation 555. Five, five. Right. Okay, 100%. Um, it's going to be track five. It's so, Yeah. Actually, I wonder, well, it probably doesn't fit on this project, but it could be like, well, anyways, it's like this beautiful song and it was so, it was like so soulful and gospel and like social experiment-y and whatever. And I was like, yes, I would love to sing on this. So I like got in the booth and like sang my heart out or whatever. And then I got out the booth and they were all kind of like, whoa, like you're really good. Like, damn, like I didn't expect that or whatever. And then I was like a couple weeks later, I texted them. I was like, do you guys want to produce my album? And they were like, oh, yeah, sure. Oh, <laughs> so wow. Then I went out to L.A. and, like, worked with them a little bit more. Um, and the song that we made that first day was going to be on Chance's on Coloring Book. Mm-hmm. But then it, like, didn't make the cut, mm-hmm. which is why I, like, texted Chance multiple times where I was like, can I put out that song? Like, like you can feature on it or whatever. And then even one time I was like, you don't even have to be on it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I just I'll take your verse. Yeah. I actually wrote a second verse just because I was like, I'll just put it out. But anyways, we'll, we'll see. Wait, if, was that through the fire? No, oh, this is like, song. that's a whole different song. Okay, okay, this this is like this, the first song that I sang on with them. Um, I don't know if I can say what it's called. I guess I just won't just in case. But um, yeah, we'll, yeah, play, we'll it play it later. We'll you. play it later. Yeah, you guys um, don't get to hear this shit. Yeah, but... Yeah, so then, yeah, so then we started working on the project. We, uh, the initial plan was, like, to make something over a month and just, like, make this cool, like, vibey project. project. Um, but then a few, like, days in, maybe, like, a week into working, Chance walked in because they were, like, in the midst of Coloring Book, too. Um, and he heard a song that I was working on, um, which ended up being all we got. But at the mm-hmm. moment, like, you know, we had all the, like, the production, you know, almost there. Like, I was starting to write my my lyrics to the verses we kind of had an idea for the chorus which was already on there and then um I saw Chance like talking to Nico on the couch he was kind of like whispering and sort of like into it and this was my first time meeting Chance so I was like "Ooh, I think Chance likes it like whatever and then like a couple days later the guys came back and they were like okay we want to play you that song we were working on like just keep an open mind okay and I was like all right so then they played it and like all of a sudden I hear Chance's voice on it and then I hear Kanye on it yes and I was like what is happening? You're like, take it, take it. No, it's yours no. to keep. And at first, they, I was, I like looked at them and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, cause I was like, are, is Kanye and Chance gonna be on my project? Like, I yeah. had no clue oh, yeah. what was going on, which like that I knew that that really wasn't gonna happen. But I was like, what is happening right now? And they were like, yeah, okay, cool. We just like wanted to play it for you. And they were kind of like trolling me because I was like, what? And so then I went and sat back down and I was like. I don't know what's happening right now. Like I, I just heard imagine. Chance and Kanye on the song, but they didn't really say anything. And I was still like getting to know them and I was kind of shy. So I was like, just like sat down. And, like, and then they were like, okay, so like Chance wants to put this as the first song on Coloring Book. Wow. And Kanye's on it. And like, are you cool with that? I was like, yes, I'm cool with that. And a Grammy <laughs> Award later. Yeah, exactly. So it was like one of those like very magical. Wow, but moments. you manifested that. Yeah. It's like the same way to me. I think there's if there's one constant in your career, it's that you're going to put your, like, you're going to, like, that whole, like, give me the ball, mm. I'm going to take a shot. And uh, you did it when you sang in front of the choir, mm-hmm. you know, at the 
tender age of what, 12? Yeah. And then <laughs> at, the, at the age of 16, you're watching Showtime at the Apollo <laughs> and you saw the thing on TV and you said, you know, you applied and you yeah. got there. <laughs> and then you manifested it. You wanted to work with the social experiment. Yeah. And you, you put yourself in those positions until you literally won a Grammy with Chance and Kanye. Pretty crazy. You're the definition of like, I'm going <laughs> to go get it. My name is Grace, and I'm going to go get it. <laughs> you know, I I think that I have to remind myself more of that, that, like, the more that I just trust that, like, the more that I'm just, like, on the right path. And I, and yeah. I know that, you know? Like, yeah. I think I think sometimes I get in my head, like, oh, like, should this be, should I be, like, bigger? Is this supposed to be happening faster or whatever? But then when I look at my journey, it's, like, everything that I've done has felt so right in that Absolutely. moment. And so, yeah. Well, are you, are, it, it, this might be too intrusive to ask, but are you still an independent artist? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so independent artists, you have the hardest job in the entire fucking world. And, but but it's also <laughs> like it pays off in the, lo- in the long term. Yeah. Because all of this foundation you're building, you own it. You know what I mean? This is all yours. Um, yeah, I mean, my favorite thing about it, so I was signed to Capital for like a year and a half. Um, okay. re- which was awesome. I actually loved being on Capitol, like no cap. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> cap. I like can't do that because shout I sound out to like Capitol. a loser. Um, but so <laughs> shout out to Capitol. Um, but it showed me, um, like what being on a major label is like and how they operate and like kind of what it, um, what it takes to compete with the labels. Like mm-hmm. if you're independent, like kind of what's happening up there and yeah. sort of understanding like, okay, this is how they're operating. Like how do we get in the game yeah yeah um and they were they were like really nice i i just really liked it it just didn't work out for like a couple reasons that were sort of s- almost serendipitous too to be honest mm-hmm. like i feel like it was a great lesson but it was also good that i didn't stay on the on the label but they gave me all my masters back like that's oh. why i got to to like put out beautiful space like if they hadn't like i don't know if a beautiful space shout would out to capital i know they were like awesome they were like listen we're oh my God. like gonna drop you or whatever but like you know we like you and it's been like great working with you and like we want to give you back your masters or whatever shout out to all the amazing (laughs) people at capital i know it was it was great so but like the thing that i like being about being independent the most is that i have the ability to drop music when i want to absolutely like that's what was the toughest thing about being on a major it was like they aren't gonna let you drop anything unless like they think it's ready or mm-hmm. if it like interferes with something else that they're trying to do or like and so it can be sort of like soul sucking because mm-hmm. you're like Ugh, like i just want to put this out or like yeah. i know that this is the right time like instinctively and like artistically um but yeah but now i'm actually i have a just distribution deal with the orchard okay. um and they've been like incredible that's also why i feel like there's like this great timing thing bubbling up just because my team is like amazing you have an amazing team can we do another quick commercial break and (laughs) shout out to dak Dak. shout out to dak who who's your create i'm creative director i've seen the man take uh do photography for you i've seen him on your video sets behind the camera and and he and he shot edited and directed lonely yeah which yeah new video which just dropped yeah i mean by the time (laughs) this interview is out you guys can see the video i personally haven't seen it yet so i'm jealous of everybody who who has seen it um but shout out to dak shout out to amy shout out to tommy tommy i'm craig you 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 have an incredible support i really do like i really do and i feel like because i went through like even from the time i was like 17 i've sort of gone through these different iterations of teams and like trying to find, find the right manager and just and now I feel like I have this like rock solid. I'm like gonna cry. <laughs> but yeah, and like Dak and Amy have been there since day one. Like That's literally amazing. since 2015, 2016, both of them. Wow. It was meant to be. Yeah. It, it was and absolutely like meant to be. they've been rock solid by you have, side through all of the... It, it, yeah. It's so, so exciting from a fan perspective. So any Grace fans know she has an incredible team around her. Mm-hmm. Grace is not going anywhere. Grace is Grace is going to keep keep <laughs> dropping. Mm-hmm. Um, the quality of the music, I, 
I didn't think you were going to be able to follow up a beautiful space mm. and, and take it to another level because that was already such an incredible project in my eyes and t- to my ears. But you have taken it to another motherfucking level. Wait till you hear the whole thing. Insincere and lonely. If that if that is a sign of what's to come, yeah. oh my fucking god. And I have to give Tommy Brown, my manager, a shout out. Shout out Tommy because Brown. he really like A and R this project from the perspective of putting me in the room with amazing producers who were more in like in the R and B space. Like Tommy kinda had this vision like for to like um help me get in the rooms with producers who were really gonna show off my voice in a different way. Like, mm-hmm. and like, just really be in like R&B spaces. Cause like A Beautiful Space was obviously, you know, R&B soul, but it was more like genre-less in a great way. Like mm-hmm. I it think, was, and, yeah. and like, that's I think what the social experiment is so good at is like, they don't make music with the mindset of a genre. It's mm-hmm. literally just like, whatever is the most creative, like, yeah. And they're Emotional. real musicians. Yeah, right? they're and yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, but this project, like, Tommy just like, like I thought that I was gonna take like a year off actually, because I was like, I'm so tired. Like I just yeah. but then all of a sudden, like Tommy's like, Hey, like I have this session for you, like you should just go. Like, like this guy's really dope. I'm like, okay, cool, I can go. Like, not thinking that I'm gonna be writing an album like before the year is over. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like, I was just in a room with like amazing musicians. And producers like Akil Henry produced Lonely, who uh, just won a Juno for like producer of the year or whatever in oh, Canada. Wow. Um, and just like a bunch of people who are working with like Lucky Day and Giveon and yeah. this girl Looney and Jasmine Sullivan. And so, yeah, I think like I'm grateful because I, I, I don't know if I would have done that myself. Actually, I know I wouldn't have. Uh, so. Anyways, but the project is crazy. It's like, I think I it's some of my life. best like writing and singing and the sound and like I'm getting really into the mixing process too. Like I said, like I'm really trying to make sure that like my vocals sound the way I want them to sound, like not yeah. too compressed, but like, I don't know. I, which by the way, you commented on, I think the post that I just posted where you said the song feels like a warm fire it does, or something, it does. which Lonely I love. Just, it because feels like, like the lotus candle it just it feels so um it just feels warm yeah you know and yeah. i i think you did that with intention mm-hmm. you said you 100%. literally referenced uh boys to men yeah and you were like this is i want i want my record to feel like this yeah like like i said at the beginning of this you are a walking hum- homage my santa right homage homage <laughs> to to the r&b music that i grew up in in love with and that's why i love your music so much Grace, you are an incredible gift to this generation. Um, I'm really excited to see where your career goes. And you should never be too hard on yourself because the independent artist is a lot of what we see the mainstream artists having. It's not really real. It's just like they're paying to be on all these different blogs and all these different Instagram pages. And they're paying to be they're paying to be put out in front of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But it's not like they always have all those fans like Leslie Jones isn't really probably going to a lot of shows <laughs> i saw leslie jones screaming play <laughs> yourself like screaming that dwight howard went to one of your shows like yeah it's cool yeah you you make real music for real people and uh i think i i think i told this to your dad when i met i randomly met grace's dad at one of the shows and i remember telling your pops i said grace's music is going to take longer to resonate because it's like vegetables you know when mm-hmm. we're kids we don't really like vegetables but, <laughs> but like we need them mm-hmm. and and the more mature we get as, as humans we start realizing like our bodies feel better mm. when we eat more vegetables mm. as a kid you can eat candy all day if i eat candy all day i'm gonna feel like shit the next mm-hmm. day so your music to me is like a great bowl of like some gumbo you know what i mean like <laughs> like awesome. someone someone a young listener or just in general a listener might not realize how much they need or love your music but with time I think your music's gonna, you know, keep reaching the masses and keep keep growing. So don't ever be hard on yourself, Grace. <laughs> you are a fucking star. Hey. You're a great singer, incredible songwriter, um, and you always dedicate so much to the art. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. always. Like Thank you. I, I've been to one Grace video shoot. I'm a little extra. I'm like sitting there reading. <laughs> I read this whole book for like three hours. He crushed it. Yeah. Look at the insincere yeah. video and see if you can spot. The top actor. I in the read video. the <laughs> shit out of that book, um, but but I, I saw in that moment what I've always heard in the music is you pay so much attention to the little details, 
and that's why to me that that's why I'm such a big fan. Like you just you pay attention to all the little stuff, you know. Well, interestingly, two things I'm gonna say is that regarding like the paying attention thing, like my um, one of my greatest influences was my uh, painting teacher, my visual art teacher in high school, because oh. I was also like really into painting and stuff. Um, and she was like, pay attention to what you pay attention to, because that will like start to inform you about like the things that you notice that make you who you are and who you are as an artist. So she'd be like, you know, are you, did you, did you notice like the flame of the candle more than like the the top of it? Like just like these little details that you would yeah. normally maybe not think about, but she kind of like opened my mindset to, to pay attention to what you pay attention to is like something that I, I think about a lot, but also like regarding, you know, the, the journey and all those things, like the thing that I, has been hitting me lately is like, it's all about the fans. Like it does not mm. matter. Like it doesn't matter like the blog or the playlist or whatever, like as long as you put your energy into like the people who love your music, you know, like that's why like when I see um, my favorite artists, like I, it's just so much, it's like about the connection that they feel to the music period. And mm -hmm. so like that, like none of the, nothing else matters. And like the more that I just focus on that, the more I'm like, yeah, like, this I am in the place that I need to be Absolutely. and like side note my dad loved that thing that you said to him oh he did <laughs> he told me about he it uh, yeah he like loved it because I think he stresses out sometimes like for sure he's a know. lawyer right yeah yeah as your dad <laughs> being a lawyer he's I can't you're in the most legally corrupt industry next <laughs> next to the pharmaceutical industry you bastard no, I'm joking. Gonna, that's a whole different we got to get Amy in do like a three-hour segment no but you're in a very legally corrupt industry where yeah. like it, the name of the game is getting getting over on people on contracts. Very sneaky. So I can imagine your father being like, oh, my fucking God. Like, oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Is he your lawyer? No. He, that was always something that, like, uh, which was the best advice. Super random, but we're family friends with Mia Hamm. You remember Mia Hamm, the yeah, soccer player? Yeah, why do I know that name? Yeah. She yeah, was, like, yeah. a huge soccer player. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so she always gave the advice to my dad, like, whatever you do, like, don't be her lawyer. Because, oh. like, you need to be her dad. Oh, like, what you know, a bar. right? And so, like, God she damn. just, he was like, okay, that's just like the rule. Like, yeah. And so, uh, yeah. So, but yeah, it's, uh, I think he just like wants me to be happy, you know? And mm. so I think he gets worried that, like, if I get overthink, you know, where I'm at in my career or whatever, that, like, I'm not gonna be happy. And so, like, when you, told him that thing about the vegetables or whatever <laughs> he, he told it to me like guess what i just got like the best piece oh of my wisdom God. i mean from my it, wand like it's yeah. it, it's really how how i feel about some artists it's like your music your music isn't made for quick consumption it's not made for a little 12 second snippet mm. it's made to really like a beautiful space you got to go through it you know just what is it eight tracks on there seven a Shows beautiful how much space. Of a fan I am. Yeah, um, reveal. Oh, yeah. by the way, I was gonna ask you what your tell is when you when you aren't a fan of the. Of the oh <laughs> shit! Uh, no, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, oh my god! So we'll I've, be able to. I've had artists be like, "You didn't really listen to my project," no. and I, I do. I listen to any artist who comes in here. Uh, Black was supposed to be here today. Six oh my god, are Black. You serious? He was supposed to come in today at two o'clock. He canceled. But the th I want to meet you. He booked like, the interview. Um, at like 12 o'clock on Monday, right on Monday, and then they canceled it at three. Between mm. 12 to three, I listened to his whole discography. Dang. So I really jump in, you know, like. I anyway. love him. And I'm, I love. I, I'm already a fan of him, yeah. but I'm not like, I'm not a diehard fan of his, so I had to really make sure I had heard everything, listen to every little crevice. So when I'm not a big fan of the artist, which isn't the artist's fault, like, yeah, like, yeah. It's like, I'm you don't not have a to big like, fan yeah. Of, yeah, I'm not a big fan of like 80% of the music out there. But yeah. It, I listen to weird shit. Like, yeah. So anyway, if I'm not a fan of an artist, I always say it's not my fault or your fault. It just is what it is. You know? Yeah. But my thing will be like, man, your music goes hard. Or like, <laughs> oh, my God. Like that shit. He's just... revealing his tell. Here's what I will say, though. <laughs> All the artists are going to be like, every... he said that. No, no. Me. Every You're single. You're not going to have any other no, artists. No, 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 no. Because I'll keep it honest. And I like to highlight every artist who's made it to a point where they have like a PR person submitting to Dash or they somehow get through my inbox, they've all done something, right? Yeah. And so I can highlight, like, hey, I don't think you're very lyrical. But it's like, well, shit, if you have a million monthly listeners on Spotify, you're doing something right. Yeah, like so it does go hard. Yeah, like, exactly. I'm going to find, I'm like, gonna find yeah. you know, like, I'll give you a great example why my opinion doesn't matter at all. 
uh, <laughs> Ice Spice came through my email last I love year. Ice Spice. She's Last like my year, new favorite artist. I remember the email came in as Drake co-signs a New York drill rapper Ice Spice. I played Munch and I was like, okay, I didn't take the interview because I just didn't. I don't know. I'm. I'm. So I'm saying it doesn't matter. Like I, <laughs> I remember the email and after she blew up, uh, Carmen, who helps with all social media here and everything, was like, hey, you know you didn't take the Ice Spice interview, and I was like, wait, what do you mean? And she's like that song that's playing at the yeah. top of the hour every single hour you didn't take the interview and I went back to my emails and I opened it and I listened to it so awesome. my opinion it's all you know what I mean it's just yeah. like it doesn't fucking matter and honestly like I wish that more people in the industry could be like okay with that acknowledgement because e like when I send music to people and I'm like kind of waiting for their response and they don't respond like I know that it's either because they haven't listened or maybe they don't like it. And I mm -hmm. almost would just love it if it's like, you know, like this isn't like my thing, but I can, I can assume that it's good, but like, I don't really like it, yeah. but you're great. And then for me to be like, okay, cool. Like now I know that you don't, it's not your bag. Like, yeah, and then I, we don't have to like, it's like dating. It's yeah, like, yeah, I'd yeah. rather just know. Yeah, <laughs> so I, then I, I don't absolutely. have to keep being like, hey, like. Absolutely. And then maybe they, we can still do something together, yeah. you know, but it just doesn't have to be that like deep, Romantic. Yeah, you're not going to connect. I don't connect with the, all of the, the Hot 100 or Top 40. You know what I mean? I only connect with like a couple of the songs. So my tell is when I tell an artist <laughs> that, that their music is, I'm like, damn, that, that that shit goes hard. That's normally like my go-to. Like, <laughs> damn, that shit goes hard. Um, but it's just I'm, I'm a very weird music taste. So you are <laughs> my music taste, if anyone is wondering, it is Grace Weber. It is like another artist that I got to sit here with that I was fucking fangirling the whole time. And she was like, you're gassing me. Is India Sean. I love India. You know I, she did the music club? Yeah, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, she was I in Milwaukee. That. Yeah. I'm a huge India fan. She didn't yeah. believe me till I was at like the third or fourth show of hers I went to. And I'm in the crowd. Mm. And I'm just fucking screaming. Yeah. And I went to her after. And she's like, oh, shit, you're like a real deal fan. She's like, yeah, yeah, you really fucking love my music. So that's the kind of music. I'm an old soul. I listen mm -hmm. to Stevie Wonder all the time. I listen to fucking uh, Wham, like. I love George Michael and Wham. Mm. Like, I just got a weird music taste. Like, if there was, rest in peace, but if George Michael was performing and Yeet was performing, mm. I would be in line for George Michael fucking three days. <laughs> no disrespect to Yeet, but I wouldn't yeah. wait in line for 20 minutes to watch him. So, yeah, like, yeah. my music taste is weird. I'll be but honest. I like it. This is my music taste, Grace. Um, Lonely is out now. Yep. Um, and Sincere has been out. And you said the next single will be out in May? Yeah. And With an amazing feature. Okay. So oh, the next single has the amazing yeah. R&B feature. Mm -hmm. Not like you won't, you might not. I'll just say that he is already really big, but he's like, get, he's like about to break big, big. Mm. Anyways, and he's like the nicest dude in the world, and he may or may not be British, but we'll leave it there. Oh, he we'll is a British there. man. He is a nice British man who's nice about British to blow man. up. <laughs> I could sit here and try to guess, but I'm embarrassed myself. <laughs> Grace, is there anyone else you want to shout out before we jump off? Um, I think. I'm good. I got like the tears in for the team. <laughs> um, my dad, you know, made the th made the list. Yes. We got. Yeah, I think we're good. I think yeah, we yeah. Checked all can, the boxes. Can we can we do a shout out? It's Dane. Dane, my husband. Shout out yes. to your husband, Dane. I remember when I met him, I said you. I thanked him, and he, I think he looked at me all weird. And I'm like, <laughs> you are the muse. Yeah. Like, you are the reason for at least some of these songs that yeah. I sing all the time. No, so he's shout out. Amazing. He's very you know, blessed. They, they say behind every great man is a great woman, but that also goes the other way. And uh, yeah, shout out to Dane, shout out to Tommy, shout out to Dak, shout out to Amy, shout out to Grace motherfucking <laughs> Weber. Thank you so much for coming in. Lonely is playing, uh, is playing on Dash. Like I've been pitching it to the programmers. Yay. Like I annoy the shit out of the programmers. Yes, keep so, annoying. Uh, actually, <laughs> Insincere was the one. I'm about to start annoying them for Lonely. So cool. we are big supporters here. Thank you so much. Anyone who wants to uh, check Grace out, it's at Grace Weber on mm -hmm. everything. Yep, right? one B. Yep. One final question. If someone's discovering Grace Weber right now mm. and they can only listen to one song, oh. what song do you want Ooh. them to listen to? Oh my goodness. Lonely. 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 Great, yeah. great. That yeah. was a trick question. Great yeah. answer. <laughs> great answer. Go listen to Lonely. Go yeah. listen to Lonely right now, everybody. It will be on Dash R and B X. It's already on Dash Discover. I got it that far, Amazing. but we're Thank trying you. to get it into the top forty radio station. So let's go. Yeah. Grace Weber, Dash Radio. This is my wand. And no cap, I am a huge fan. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks Alrighty, for having me. Woo.